welcome back everyone. Good morning. My name is Danielle Hayden and I'm here with our special guest, Martin Bama of the Bama Group Realtors. Hi Martin, good morning. Hi Danielle, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. We're right. here to bring you another weekly update of the local real estate market with the best expert in the area, Martin Bama, has been doing this for years and does weekly analysis of the market. Uh, and also every time he, he does a listing and has a buyer, um, they, they're just the best. So Martin, today I'm hoping you can walk us through what is really top of mind with a lot of consumers. And that would be, how do you know if your segment of the market is hot? How do you know if your segment of the market is cold? What are you seeing right now as we go into the fall of 2020 with the current worldwide pandemic uh, and how is it affecting different segments? Right. So one of the benefits I, I have with, um, with having a team is that we track everything. We track every market segment in Ann Arbor and $50,000 price points. So what we do is we find out how many houses have, uh, are listed, how many are pending, and how many have closed. And then what we do, we figure out the month supply of housing in that category. So if there's four to six months of inventory, that's considered a balanced market. If it's greater than six months, then you get into a buyer's market. And if it's less than four months, you are in a, what we call a seller's market, right? And so what I look at and what's really stood out this year, up until we get up to $400,000, there's less than three months supply of inventory. So that's really significant. So that I think is what's driving this market. As much uncertainty as there is, um, the demand is not as high. However, the inventory is so low that we're able to maintain the prices that we're getting and in that price point we're actually seeing multiple offers simply because of the supply and demand right once you get above 400 it starts moving into four to five months supply and once we get up to 550 there's a seven month supply and and generally speaking all the way up to when i get into like eight well it's interesting right now 800 and above um, up to a million, the supply there was like a nine, 10, 11 month supply right now because the inventory is so incredibly low and we had so many sales in the third quarter in that price point that right now, if I look at just the most immediate numbers, it's actually a seller's market, you know, um, if you're dividing the number of sales that have happened each month into what's active. So like between 800, and these are just numbers that I know, between 800 and 1.1 million homes built since 1990. So that's like all the Toll Brothers subs, all the what I call the ring subdivisions around Ann Arbor. Um, there is only seven houses for sale. And, and so it is absolutely uh, amazing how low that inventory is. But, and then I look at, um, like even just in Walnut Ridge, we had four houses sell and close in the last month, right? Um, which really starts skewing things. So, so it's interesting when you're meeting with a seller and you're sort of sharing this information with them, um, you, you know, it's, uh, you have to sort of look at the macro and what's happening right at the moment. And, but having this kind of data um, really helps explain to a seller, like, you know what, with three months supply, we could push the price a little bit, right? If we're getting over six months supply, you don't want to push the price. The confusing thing right now is when you have a market that traditionally has had uh, been in a buyer's market, be but because of the low inventory we're seeing right now, it's sort of interesting what kind of market it really is, right? Well, and that's exactly what I was thinking because for so long in the last couple of years, we we have seen that, you know, below 300, 400,000 was, was multiple offers, super right. competitive. My dog is totally going to bark right now, so we'll just do the best we can. <laughs> okay. um, but, uh, but, you know, and, and the fascinating thing is all of a sudden now, homes that are 800,000 and above for the last three months due to the market opening up, people wanting more space, people working from home, and the low interest rate, all of a sudden we've seen this major shift from 800,000 and above. How long do you anticipate, like how are you going to watch that to see when we go kind of back to the normal status? Well, I literally watched that. I mean, weekly, right? And so you can, even if you yourself don't do all this tracking, the one thing you can do when you go on a listing appointment, determine what the market niche of that house is, okay? And like by market niche, I mean, let's say it's a two, uh, you have a house, oh, let's say in um, Georgetown, okay? Those are two-story homes, generally speaking, built, most of them were like in the 70s, I believe, or 80s. Um, so you, you do a search and say, okay, I am looking for homes in an armor, two-story homes built between 1960 and 1990 and um, between a certain price point, right? That becomes your niche, and I save that niche in my MLS. So when I'm meeting with my seller, every week I pull up that same search and say, listen, this is what's happened in that niche. Then I go back and say, how many houses sold in that same niche in the last 12 months? And that'll tell me the absorption rate. So at any one point then, I can control, I can explain to the seller, listen, right now in your niche, 
there's this month's inventory. This is the rate at which they're selling. So we've got a three month supply or we've got a five month supply. And so that's what I do for every single listing. I, I determine what that market niche is and I follow that weekly, constantly letting my sellers know, right? And, and this is what's interesting with 800 plus price point. What's happened all of a sudden the inventory shrunk to almost nothing, right? So technically they're in a seller's market, but um, it's right now it's just very quiet. So it's just really interesting how that goes. The fact that we had so many sales in the third quarter is sort of skewing stuff, right? But every single week I just look at these numbers. I'm like, hey, how many houses went under contract? And I have that conversation with them, but I'm backing it up with numbers. I'm not just talking off the top of my head. What I really love about this is that your clients that are in that price point, by being in relationship with you long-term, they were better able to take advantage of that momentary blip in the luxury market. And right. they were able to capitalize, like unlike they have been able to in the last three to five years. Oh, no. Yeah, very interesting. And you know, the other thing, too, what I really pay attention to, because I always have listings in that price point, I know exactly who has buyers, right? because um, they're showing my listing. So whenever I list a new property, I can tell them, listen, right, right now I know there are 14 buyers in your market niche because they've been looking at my property. So I can constantly, I have an idea of what the buyer pool is like for that market niche based on the activity I'm seeing on current listings that I have. And that's really powerful too, because there are times where I'll say, you know what, from based on the activity I have on current listings in your market niche, there's only three buyers out there, right? Sometimes I can say, you know what, there's 17 or 18 buyers, especially the higher price point, because what happens is a lot of people in the higher price point are a little pickier and they want to really take their time finding the right property. So that's also really powerful. You bring that kind of information um, to a client. All right, Martin, uh, first off, you know, it's been, it's clear and evident how much of a, a specialist you are in this market data. What I really love about it is that you've set up a system where you have created organization and specialization on a really high level by you know, going in and saving those, those niche searches in the MLS per listing. Right. And it's scalable and it's a great business practice and it's white glove service for your clients. So bravo on that. And uh, for all you agents out there, learn from Martin. He does it fantastically. Excellent. So we're going to see you next week, everybody. Uh, thanks for bearing with the dog here, uh, you know, COVID YouTube times. And uh, we'll see y'all soon. Okay, sounds good. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay,